Hey everyone, it's Saurav and welcome to this video. In this video, I will be showing you a better way to structure your React project or Next project. Now for this, I will be using React. However, this can be easily applied to Next.js projects as well because it's pretty much the same. So let's get started. So right here, I have a React project and it is using TypeScript by the way. So first of all, the thing that we need to look is, is the package.json file, of course. So in the package.json file, you'll actually see, so in the package.json file, what we have is that first of all we need to check is the scripts. Now generally React comes with four React comes with four scripts: the start one, the build, the test, and the eject. I've added serve to serve the production build for that, and I have added few scripts to check for uh, types, to check for formatting, linting, and formatting everything else, and simply testing every other stuff. Uh, simply testing all of these uh, scripts as well. Then we're using ESLint to for uh, to format to actually enforce the coding style. We're using Husky to create some pre-git commit hooks. We're using Prettier to solve that problem of uh, prettifying our code. And finally, as I told you, we're using serve. So let's just go ahead and see how ESLint is configured. So in the ESLint, we're using Airbnb for the extend type, and we're using Prettier as our uh, extender or the plugin for that. And other than that, it's some default rules and configuration. Uh, if you want this project, it should be given down below in the description as well, if you want to like have a look into these files. Then we have our prettier file, the prettier ignore, the ESLint ignore, and all that. Now let's go ahead and talk about the main stuff that we have the source folder. So in the source folder, we actually have the app.tsx file. So which is how generally I like to have the main entry point to our application, that is the app.tsx and the index.tsx where everything is rendered. I also like to create comments for separating components, styling, and root direct or the root uh, things that we're importing. For example, React and any of the first or the third party packages that we have installed. Then we have index.tsx where our actual app is being rendered. And finally, we have the folders. So let's see how this works. So first of all, we have the general component folder and components are created inside of it. Also in the component folder, I like to keep everything as, as the first letter caps. So component as C caps, the button as B caps, and we're using SAS. Also, it's better to structure everything inside of a folder and then create a file and style for that corresponding file. So for example, we have the button file here and the button file has this corresponding style right inside of it. Now, we have these styles as well. The first one is the index.css, scss. This actually is the global styles that we're using. We're also defining some variables here for so that everything is properly maintained and actually imported everywhere in the code as well. So you don't have to like import this file again and again it will be imported automatically because we're including it in the index.tsx actually. So it's the global styles. Then there are, for, uh, there are there is a, another SAS file for animations that we're using. Now it's completely up to you. If you're using CSS, then it's up to you how you're gonna include that. But I'm using SAS, so it's much better to be included. Now there are new folders here, which is the page component. And that is the page component. Why? Because we're not putting components inside of components as well. So for example, in the app.tsx, we have a header. Now header, you're not gonna be using it everywhere, right? You're not gonna be using header at every single place. You're gonna be using it only at the landing page, probably. So for this, what we have is that we have separate page components folder and the page components carry up everything that's inside of the folder uh, or anything that is related to a specific file or the place. So for example, landing page is going to be having header and some section called what is it. So finally, we're going to be putting that everything inside of here so that you doesn't conf confuse it with the component folder and the component folder itself will be creating things that will be highly componential so what do i mean by that it simply means that the things that are going to be inside the component folder are going to be highly modularized that means that you will only place things that are highly modularized and can be used anywhere now this is a even more complex folder structure but it is actually useful now we're creating some extra folders. The folder first we're creating is the config folder. Now what config folder does is actually it contains files that are gonna be using for configuration of your certain things. For example, you're gonna be storing ENVs or any other stuff inside of this. Then we have interfaces. Now interfaces is a folder that, gonna be using, uh, that we're gonna be using inside of TypeScript, uh, TypeScript projects. Now this, since this is a TypeScript project, that's why we have interfaces. Now these interfaces are probably global interfaces that are gonna be used literally everywhere inside of your uh, React project. So if your interfaces are probably too much related to a component, it's generally preferable to create them inside of the component itself, like we're creating in this card component. However, if it is not, generally it's uh, good to create an interfaces folder and put all your global interfaces in there. Then we have the context folder. If you're using context API, then this folder is gonna be pretty much useful for you because you're gonna be using putting all your context in here. Now, if you're not using context, generally you create a new folder called Redux. If you're using Redux and you're gonna be 
including everything in the of the Redux here. If you're using Relay, then you will call it Relay and anything else that you want. Another fo folder that we have is the Utilities folder. This is going to be containing every of the utilities that you're going to be creating, specifically utility classes, anything that's going to be a helper to your original files. Finally, we have two extra folders that is going to be for tests and mocks. So any mocks or tests that you're going to set up are going to come in here. It's completely up to you what those will be. However, there are, there's other way of doing that. If you're using just, you might have seen people doing this. So for example, if you have, have header, you'll create a new folder inside of it and call it tests here. This is perfectly valid. There's no issue in doing this. However, if you're having tests, for example, Cypress or maybe an E2E or integration test, it's preferable to use this one. So that is a much better folder structure for React projects, even for Next.js projects, since everything is going to be working pretty much the same in both of this. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you will actually like using this folder structure as well. So thanks for watching.